A finisher is supposed to be more than just a move that ends a match. It's a maneuver that also drives home a wrestler's character and defines their legacy. While fans love iconic finishes such as the Stone Cold Stunner or the Rock Bottom, there are superstars of the past and present who have used less than stellar maneuvers to get the three count. However, there seem to be good reason as to why these superstars changed up their finishes. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 9 WWE finishes that had to be changed immediately. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleAmia.com. Number 1. Hideo Itami slash Kenta go to sleep This GTS is one of the most infamous moves in pro wrestling. Why? Because of Mr. Coulter personality himself, CM Punk single-handedly made the finisher famous thanks to his time in WWE. However, a Japanese wrestler named Kenta was the man who invented the GTS. Before his WWE run as Hideo Itami, Kenta was one of the hottest Japanese wrestlers on the indie circuit thanks to classic matches against legends such as Mitsuharu Misawa. That iconic feud saw the birth of the GTS and it's become a well-known finisher for the New Japan star. But fast forward to 2014 and Kenta signed a NXT contract. By this time CM Punk was gone from the company, so it wasn't a surprise that WWE officials weren't keen on him using the GTS because it reminded them of CM Punk. However, as time passed, Triple A built anticipation for the move until he finally hit it on Austin Aries at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 2. Since then, that became a staple part of Atami's finisher until he moved up to the main roster. He hit Brian Kendrick once with the GTS, and that was it. Kendrick suffered a broken orbital bone and he was never allowed to use the GTS again. Brian Kendrick recalled the incident during his appearance on High Spot's virtual gimmick table show and made it clear that Atami was very apologetic following the incident. However, that didn't matter to WWE officials. For four years, he was banned from using the very move that he invented until he left WWE in 2017. Kenta hasn't been shy about his time in the company, with the New Japan star even stating that the worst experience he's dealt with in the wrestling business was being banned from using the very move he created. Number 2. Samoa Joe Muscle Buster Speaking of banned moves, the Muscle Buster and Samoa Joe are synonymous with one another. The Samoan Submission Machine has won numerous battles with the finisher, including his unforgettable TNA World Title win against Kurt Angle at Lockdown 2008. Joe continued to use the Muscle Buster when he signed with WWE in 2015, but then a freak accident that ended Tyson Kidd's career put the Muscle Buster on the ban list. In June of 2015, Kidd and Joe had a dark match and Joe used his signature Muscle Buster finisher. Kidd suffered a severe neck injury and immediately went to surgery. Thankfully, the former WWE star made a miraculous recovery as this was a life-threatening injury that only 5% of people survived. Joe did use the Muscle Buster on several occasions following the scary incident, including feuds against Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura. However, Joe's go-to finisher became the Coquina Clutch, which still worked out for the former WWE star, but wasn't as dynamic or devastating as the Muscle Buster. Number 3. Chris Jericho – Lion Tamer the Lion Salt and the Lion Tamer have been in Chris Jericho's arsenal for decades. Then time passed on, the Lion Tamer slowly transitioned to a simple Boston Crab that was labelled as the Walls of Jericho. A Jericho's Lion Tamer was never banned as he would bust out the original submission move here and there during his WWE run. However, according to the former WWE champion himself, the move was harder to use on larger opponents, which is why he opted for the Boston Crab instead. And Chris Jericho was a huge fixture in WCW's cruiserweight division, so he didn't particularly run into that issue much there. It's understandable why Jericho had to change his moveset in order to suit the bigger men in WWE, even if that change was just a glorified version of the Boston Crab. Number 4. Randy Orton – The Punk Kick Randy Orton is a veteran in the WWE, having a career that has spanned over many eras. His RKO is one of the most widely known wrestling moves ever. It's a devastating finisher that has had a number of variations over the years. However, for a brief time, Orton used an even more devastating finisher, a finisher that was considered incredibly brutal. Too brutal, in fact, that Vince McMahon outright banned the finisher. Now, Orton did, however, manage to get the finisher back. Orton made sure the move was now safe enough to use on the likes of Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels, as the consequences of the move going wrong could lead to severe damage. Number 5. Dean Ambrose Dirty Deeds Dean Ambrose was always an interesting cast in the WWE. The former WWE champion made an immediate impact by debuting alongside Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins during the main event of Survivor Series 2012. 
Ambrose's moveset perfectly fit with his character, a scrappy and crazed pitbull who was the furthest thing from a clean fighter. So when he used the original Dirty Deeds, a headlock driver, it was a rather simple finisher that fits into his personality and it even looked devastating. But over time, Dirty Deeds turned into a simple underhook DDT. On one hand, it was a nice homage to Mick Foley, the man that he was originally supposed to feud with in his WWE debut. But why did it change? Well, blame Randy Orton, or at least his height. As in an interview with Fightful, Ambrose mentioned, The headlock drive is awesome if you got the right guy doing it to the right guy. It can be the nastiest, coldest pile driver looking thing in the world, or if the guy is taller than you, which so many of the guys in the WWE were taller than me, it can just be really awkward and stupid looking. I think I gave it to Randy Orton one time, who is someone with a significant height advantage on me. It was just awkward. I was like, that's it, I'm switching this up. Number 6, Kevin Owens, Pop-Up Powerbomb. One of the most memorable debuts in NXT was Kevin Owens' shocking heel turn after Sami Zayn's big win for the NXT Championship. Owens powerbombed Zayn onto the apron and there was legitimate concern that the newly crowned NXT Champion was injured. His pop-up powerbomb was built up as an extremely devastating finisher that has put several names on the injured list including John Cena, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. That's presumably why it had been moved to a signature move instead. The stunner worked perfectly for Stone Cold Steve Austin and though Owens performs the move correctly, it never looks as dangerous or devastating as a pop-up powerbomb. That finisher was not just a great looking move, but it effectively put Owens as a credible main eventer. Hopefully he gets the spotlight as his primary finisher again. Number 7, Ricochet Double Moonsault. Ricochet was a wild man before his WWE days. If you thought his moves were impressive now, go back and watch some of his bouts in Lucha Underground or even his fame match against Will Ospreay and New Japan Pro Wrestling. A Ricochet is a human highlight reel, not surprisingly he slowed down moveset when he signed his WWE contract in 2018. Every now and then, Ricochet will pull out an old indie such as a double moonsault in 2018's NXT War Games. Ricochet's standard finisher is a 630, but the double moonsault was typically his normal finisher on the indie scene. That move by itself is simply a thing of beauty and a flasher and more impressive maneuver than the 630. However, Ricochet mentioned in an interview with Chris Van Vliet that he simply doesn't want to do the move anymore due to its risky nature. Honestly, probably only the double mood salt maybe, and that's not even, honestly, I could probably still do it if I wanted to, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to, I did it off the cage. I would have actually taken some time to practice, really practice, because it's just one of those that's not used often. I was just asked the other day when was the last time I even did it. I couldn't tell you the last time that I did the double mood salt. I don't know, other than the one off on the cage at NXT, before that, even like in the ring man, I couldn't tell you. Number 8, Seth Rollins Curb Stomp. Remember that awkward period when WWE stripped Seth Rollins of the curb stomp? Well, reportedly Vince McMahon opted to ban the move because he felt that young children could easily imitate the finisher. And whilst it was banned for some time, the curb stomp is perfect for Rollins. It was a nice tool for him as a cowardly heel as he could easily come out of nowhere and nail his finisher. It was also an effective finisher for him as a babyface because the stomp always looks so devastating and cool. And number 9, Triple H Original Pedigree. A Triple H's mastery of the pedigree has earned him numerous victories and accolades throughout his WWE career. It has become synonymous with his name and has solidified his place as one of the all-time greats in pro wrestling. However, the pedigree we saw throughout his late years in WWE was completely different to the one he used during the start. Fans got a glimpse of this devastating version of the move when he wrestled Marty Garner on WWE Superstars. Rather than just release the whole body on top of the mat after underhooking the wrestler's arms, Triple H would devastatingly spike the head right into the mat, which subsequently injured his neck. Triple H had then since changed the move and it worked in his favour, as some of the guys in WWE were huge and there's no way that he could have spiked piledrived them right on their head. But there you have it folks, 9 finishes that had to be changed immediately. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.